Let's do this. And welcome back, a new episode of Coffee with Toffees on the docket for tonight. My name is Toffees, you can find me at Toffees underscore Dota 2. Actually, you used to be able to find me there, I keep saying it and it's not true anymore. We've changed it, you can find me at Toffees TV at uh, the same place. Really just changed the name of the account. Uh, I've got some new projects on the burner. We're not leaving Dota by any stretch of the imagination. However, there is a new uh, po politics podcast that I am working on starting up hopefully by next month. Uh, some other stuff. So we decided to change the name uh, just because I use the Twitter account now for things besides just Dota. So uh, bear with me. It'll still be 98% Dota tweets, but we do want to make sure that, you know, there's some marketability there when it's needed to be, I guess. Uh, so follow me at Toffees TV. And a big shout out to Razor, the sponsors of the show, uh, for all the equipment that helps keep the show running. Thanks, guys. We appreciate all that you contribute to small content creators like myself. That's it, guys. Not a long show. Uh, relatively quiet. We had ESL wrap up. And when I say relatively quiet, I mean it was a chaotic weekend in the sense of we had some Dream League qualifiers. We had the, the Frankfurt major qualifiers. Everyone was at hubs. But that meant that there wasn't a lot that wasn't covered. Everything was wall-to-wall -wall covered. Analysts everywhere. People jet-setting all over the world uh, to cover these events. So I'm just going to give you some news updates to make you uh, fit in at the water cooler. Talk a little more with your friends about what's happening in Dota. And then we will We'll go to Proxy's perspective, and he's going to give us a reflection on the qualifiers for the Frankfurt Major. So pretty straightforward show, uh, nothing too fancy tonight. So with that said, let's jump right into it. First piece of news, and this is a very big one. This is a, I don't I don't want to say it's a surprise to everybody, but it is definitely something that a lot of us was hoping wouldn't happen, and that is that Navi has officially announced that they are in fact disbanding uh the comment from igor kaf who is uh the coo of navi says after protracted series of failures of our team we have to take measures and with hard feelings fully disband the squad fully on behalf of all fans and navi staff i express gratitude to the guys for their work and emotions which they've granted to us all the time however sooner or later the time of old heroes passes the fate gives us new challenges which we need to accept and prove that navi is a team of champions they then go on to say that they are not doing away with the team altogether navi will be announcing a new squad in the coming weeks now the reason we're going to start to see stuff like this happen is remember the reason well, you had to lock in your rosters during the trade period to qualify for frankfurt major invites got it so after teams get knocked out after they're no longer available to play for the majors whether it's through qualifiers or opens or whatever now we're free to make changes and the faster you move with the changes the faster you can start renegotiating and finding new players so navi released early now some folks are unhappy about the decision I think they did what they had to do. Navi needs a team that performs better. It looked to me like Navi, the players weren't performing well within that group. But here's the key, and this is where I actually take a little bit of heart from this, is that Navi announced it and released these players very early on. They could have held out. They could have scouted for another team. They might already have one. I don't want to say that they don't. But they definitely could have held them under contract a little bit longer and made it harder for, say, other teams to pick them up. Um, that said... They just got rid of the team. They said, guys, good luck on your own. Now, we don't know who's coming back. We don't know who's going to stay around. From the tenor of the announcement, it sounds like Dendi's going to be off doing his own thing, as will Havost. Uh, but really, it's hard to tell. They do say, however, in the announcement that we can expect to see some old names coming back. So I don't know if that means old names from the current team or players from the past who are slightly retired. A lot of questions in the air. Navi has been at the forefront of all kinds of fun stuff, uh, most notably that open the letter that was leaked uh, to organizers about Navi's willingness to play in certain tournaments. Uh, so we'll see where this goes. I know that right now Navi Dota is not Navi's flagship, so they do have some flexibility to sort of reinvest and reinvent, and that's, I think, what we're seeing out of this. So good luck to the guys. Dendi, Havost, Funix, Soneko, PSM. It's been a great ride. Uh, these guys had so much that went for them. Uh, the Born to Win tag, I think, really holds true. They won an international. They've been fight. They fought tooth and nail and gave us some of the greatest fights in Dota history between Alliance and Navi. In fact, 
Some folks called it the El Clasico because it really was sort of like an old school soccer grudge match. Um, these derbies where people come out from all over the place to really watch these two teams feud. And I, I'm going to miss seeing that between Navi and Alliance uh, with the changes. And honestly, Denny's probably one of my favorite personalities in Dota. So I hope that he lands somewhere. I really, really want to see it because that kid's smile can melt a million hearts and buy a million players. And uh, I hope that somebody capitalizes on that. I really, really do. All right, next switch that we saw is from Hellraisers as they did announce a roster change. You see they have released uh, Dread, who is their captain. So they've released two players, Dread, in my opinion, the most notable of that. They are thanking both Daniel and Andre for their efforts. Um, and the statement from the manager is we have claims on sports results of the teams, but not on people. I don't think that this was the only way out from the appeared situation, but this is not my choice. It is hard to take all of this since it was Andre to stand in at the orig origins of Hellraiser's Dota roster. It was, all, it was also me to start working at the time, and it is always hard to part ways with the people you are so used to. But this is how it works, and sometimes we must move on. I hope that our ways will cross one day. The team itself will continue training with an eye towards the results which our fans deserve. So, uh... They do have three players remaining on the roster. Dread, I think, was kind of a staple with them. He's the captain, uh, and he is leaving. So that's kind of a big blow to Hellraiser. It should be interesting to see where they fall out during the shuffle. But again, this is a thing. This is the same region as Na'Vi. These teams are shaking it up, which means you could see some Na'Vi players land on Hellraisers. You could see these Hellraiser guys end up on Na'Vi. Uh, just because a player leaves a team doesn't mean anything at the moment because there's plenty of places to land. We saw that during the last shuffle. We're probably going to see it again. But that said, Dread does leave Hellraisers. Now, here's an interesting piece of news. Uh, we got the Gozu report on it up on the screen. And this is crazy to me. So if we're talking about CIS news, it's kind of been rolling out crazy from the CIS lately. Virtus Pro made an announcement today where we found out that they got a hundred million dollar investment from like the 97th richest man in the world. He decided the esports was somewhere he wanted to put his money and he invested that much cash into it. It's called USM Holdings from what I understand. And the man's name is Ivan Streshinsky. And I believe it was 97th. It might be 75th. I'm not great with numbers, uh, but it was definitely in the top 100 richest men in the world. Um, and he said, uh, or I'm sorry, a statement from Antin Cherapenikov, the co-owner and magic partner of Virtus Pro, uh, as well as Ivan himself. So Ivan said, esports are a unique proposition uniting the sports, media, and inter internet industries. It's a fast-growing market, which has already generated huge interest around the world, and Virtus Pro is the leader in the esports industry in Russia. I'm confident that the support for USM will spur the company's further development and enable it to take projects to a whole new level. This Co-owner of Virtus Pro then goes on to say, our main goal is to increase the popularity of esports in Russia, and this is what USM's investment will go towards. The funds will primarily be used to launch new tournaments and various new gaming disciplines, as well as to create media channels to cover the sports and to construct esports arenas. There's the big one. They're actually going to be building esports arenas in Russia. So I don't know the details of what they're looking for or how this is going to go, but $100 million is going to go a very long way. And Virtus Pro, who has been great, in a lot of different sports they've done very strong in dota they're from what i understand great in csgo as well as some other esports it sounds like they're really doubling down and going to take it to the next level so this is the first time that i've seen such a massive public investment uh in a team and you got to think that that's got to be pretty exciting in terms of where esports is headed to have a huge owner someone so wealthy just throwing money at it to see just what they can get on the return so that's it for the big sort of uh, CIS news, which a lot of that was stirred up this week. Frankfurt Majors, uh, the open qualifiers, the qualifier qualifiers, the qualifiers of the qualifier qualifiers are done. We know who's going. This is the list of teams going to Frankfurt. So if you want to fly to Frankfurt or walk if you live there, I don't know if you're listening to the show because... You probably prefer speaking uh, a different language, but you know if you are, that's great. You can walk to the games. It's going to be Evil Geniuses, C D E C L G D, Vici Gaming, Vega Squadron, Team Secret, Virtus Pro, E Home, Cloud Nine, Team Unknown, Maneski, Fanatic, Newbie, Invictus Gaming, Monkey Business, and Alliance. Now, a couple things to mention here: Invictus Gaming eked in just 
barely got by none other than newbie youth. So when we talk about the China invite, the, the qualifiers, right, to get into this, we know that eHome got there direct. A bunch of the top Chinese teams got direct invites. And we said, is it going to be competitive? What teams can compete? Uh, and there's some teams that we thought would really push through that are not showing up here. Most notably, I'm sorry, I'm not going to talk about that. We're just going to talk about newbie. Uh, and the fact that in the assessment panel, I will say I did not count newbie youth as a potential threat they took ig in the losers bracket final they put up a great fight ig got through it but we were this close folks to having newbie and newbie youth both at the frankfurt major which would have been a big win for the region and especially for the newbie program the other big shock i think for a lot of folks came out of the north american region i'm sorry not north american the americas region the shock was north american in that Digital Chaos, as well as some other very strong North American teams like the High Council of Wizards and Priests, Complexity, uh, Leviathan, or Imagine, whatever you want to call them right now. None of these teams, uh, Fire or Archon, everybody keeps changing their names on me. None of these teams got into the Frankfurt Major. A lot of them were favored over the South American teams. Cloud9 did make it in in a convincing game. I'm glad to see Cloud9 stepping up and proving they deserve to get the invites and the experiences that they are. They're still, they're still a world-class team, even with the roster changes. The surprise, though, was Team Unknown, Peruvian team that has sparked the Viva Peru meme all over dota if you're watching mlg or anything else this week you saw the meme everyone's excited about it team unknown came in and just stomped through the qualifiers man and it came down to them versus dc they put up a very convincing match including things like taunting heroes before killing them it was a lot of fun to watch and maybe this signals i don't think maybe maybe this does signal the growth of SA Dota into a real competitor. Two years ago, nobody thought in North American Dota was relevant in the world scene. South America has sort of had trouble catching on and getting attraction in terms of respect. They did it this time. They came through. They knocked out some really, really strong North American teams to get that spot. And best of luck to them, as I think that they absolutely deserve for the performances that they put up. Alliance will be in the Frankfurt Major. I'm excited about that. I'm a, a big Alliance fan. I watched them first. I've always enjoyed their play. Uh, glad to see them getting in. So to Loda and the boys, good luck to you. Monkey Biz, another team that everybody's going, why aren't they sponsored? These guys are phenomenal. In fact, I just watched them play Virtus Pro at absolutely crushing game in MLG. So these guys have definitely got what it takes to put up a competition. Frankfurt Major, gonna be a good one. And as we talk about the Frankfurt Major, that takes us over to our next piece. And that, <coughs> excuse me, is Proxy's perspective. Now, if you don't know Proxy PL, you might have seen some write-ups of his on Reddit, joined Dota, uh, a lot, Dota Blast, a lot of different websites. He is a writer and an editor, uh, really a great student of the scene and has been a lead writer on the show for a couple of months now uh, and he came to me and we said oh, let's get an idea for a segment and i think that proxy is really smart so what we want to do is we're giving him a couple of minutes every week where he can sort of give a reflection on something that's happened take us into the scene maybe get a little bit behind it and give us some thoughts that come from somebody who spends all of his time watching nothing but competitive dota so without further ado we'll flip it over and this is proxy pl in Proxy's Perspective. Hi guys, this is Proxy Perspective, and today we're going to be talking about interesting things that happened during the major qualifiers. So, the first thing we should talk about this, in my opinion. All right, give us a second while we figure out what happened to Proxy's Perspective. <laughs> Hold on. Hi guys, this is Proxy Perspective, and today we're going to be talking about interesting things that happened during the major qualifiers. So, the first thing we should talk about is, in my opinion, the performance of the TI3 Champions Alliance. Their roster has been performing much better ever since their previous captain, Score, returned to the squad, and now they qualified from arguably the hardest region, to the Frankfurt Major. And when we are talking about Alliance and their performance, there is one game that we should definitely talk about, and this is the second game against NIP. This game is ridiculous, and you definitely should watch it. So Alliance pulls off a 
third biggest comeback in competitive, ga competitive gaming ever. And why am I saying this? Well, because I think that while watching this game, you should really know about it. It makes it more interesting and more fun to watch. So go check it out. It's a really great game and let me know how you liked it. The second thing I think we should talk about is Team Unknown qualifying from America. Who is Team Unknown? We don't know because they are actually unknown players. I know some of them played in Union Gaming, but they are relatively unknown to the bigger audience. So because of that, it's a very interesting thing. They came out through open qualifiers and they are the only team that qualified 